Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video, I want to share with you a whole bunch of different ways of picking, different ways of positioning our hand, positioning our fingers, positioning our pick, and how the different approaches might work better or worse depending on what you're trying to play. I've found over the years that it's good to have a few different ways of approaching picking depending on the thing you're trying to play. If you're trying to go from one string to another really fast, if you're trying to stay on one string in one note and tremolo pick, if you're trying to get a funky sound, if you're trying to get a sharper attack, a softer attack, if you're using distortion, if you're not using distortion. And also what's true is that if you look at all the great pickers out there, the shredders in different genres of music, you'll find a lot of different techniques, yet they're all able to reach their goals. So what works for you might not work for me, I personally have experimented with lots of different ways of picking because picking has never come naturally to me, and I feel like I've developed some bad habits over many years. I didn't actually start actively thinking about picking until many years into my playing, and I also feel like I made a lot of progress over the last few years because I am finally getting into investigating the picking hand instead of just going on autopilot. So I'm going to share with you some different options, but before we get into it, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks. And if you want to be notified of any new lesson, be sure to tap the bell and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in future lessons. That's where we're always looking for ideas. All right, let's get into it. So I'm just going to play the seventh fret of the G string. So what I've always focused on is just getting the note to sound good. This is my default technique. It's not very sustainable because I have my fingers kind of planted, you know, I've got my hand kind of out. Now that sounds good to me. What makes it sound good? Well, it's not, doesn't have a noisy pick attack like this, right, where you hear that click, click, click. So it's not very clicky. Why is it not clicky? Because the tip of the pick is just going straight through the string. Right? It's not like going sideways like that. It's going straight through. So to me, that is kind of a hallmark of nice clean tone, especially. Now, one thing I've struggled with is when I start picking fast, I get this kind of thing going. So what works at a slow tempo might not work at a fast tempo. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So once I realized that, I thought, okay, so what would make an efficient movement? Well, one thing that would make a movement efficient is instead of going in two planes of motions, down and out, which is what was happening, this kind of stabby thing, that I'm just going one direction, right? Now that is going to minimize the movement as opposed to trying to do that, right? So how do we allow ourselves to just go down without going out? Well, it requires a slight angle where the pick is kind of angled so that when you go through the string, you're going away. So you're not hitting the string right below, right? If I didn't angle my pick, I might hit that string right below. Right now it's okay because I'm muting, but if I didn't mute that string below, that would happen. But if I do that same thing and I go away, see, I'm not hitting the string underneath. So that's one direction I could go. I could also go in this direction. That would look like this, right? So if I want the pick to angle that way, that means my hand has to kind of angle that way. If I want the pick to angle that way, that means my hand has to kind of angle this way. So this is one fundamental difference you see between different pickers. Some are more like this, where the wrist curves that way. Some are more like this, where the wrist curves that way. Now it's hard to tell which is preferable on just a single note. So then you got to think, well, what's like an actual line? Let's say we want to play this line. Well, now I'm going to try to play it slanted this way. Okay, also just FYI, I'm planting my forearm on the guitar. And I'm also sort of planning my wrist on the low E string a little bit as well. Okay, now I'm gonna try slanting this way. 
So the problem I'm finding with this is some open strings ringing out, whereas here, slanting downwards, I was kind of muting those open strings when I was done with them with my thumb and with my palm. So that for me is cleaner than I'm getting some I'm getting some open string noise, personally. Yeah, so personally I feel like I could control more of the open string noise this way than this way. Okay, now the way that I hold the pick, my thumb comes to one edge, the pick kind of comes right out the side, and then my index finger goes to the other edge. That's kind of my way of holding the pick. Some people hold it more like this, where the pick comes right out of the tip of the index finger. So that feels really weird to me because I'm not used to it. What George Benson does, he has it come straight out of the index finger, wraps his thumb around like this, and instead of angling the pick this way, he angles the pick this way. So his technique, which is very famous if you look up George Benson picking technique, is like this. To me, that also feels kind of weird, but I do find that you get good tone. When the pick is angled that way. And George Benson was one of the fastest, cleanest, clean players. No distortion, no effects, just crystal clear single note lines uh, with clean tone picking like this. So that was more his way of picking. So personally, I like to have this palm available at all times for muting open strings. That's kind of my thing. But so we've got angling the pick this way, angling it that way, tilting it this way, tilting it that way, going on that angle, going on this angle. These are some different options. Then you have other players that tilt their thumb like this. <laughs> bit of a tilted thumb and it's kind of this closed grip. Okay, then we have wrist or elbow. This is wrist. This is elbow. Now the elbow being it's a huge muscle, I feel like it doesn't have as fine control as the wrist, but when I do tremolo picking, Personally, I like to use the elbow because I feel like I can get a fast motion from the elbow that I can't, I can't really, from the wrist. I don't know, I, I get tired faster in the wrist. than the forearm. So for me, tremolo picking is the only thing I do with the elbow and everything else I do more with the wrist, but it could be a combination of the two. Then there's also palm muting, right? So if we wanna be able to mix in palm muting, we wanna pick a technique that allows our palm to be on the ready there. Some people pick more with their fingers. Someone that does this a lot is uh, Kenny Burrell. I remember watching videos of him play. And George Benson did this too. He did a lot of this. So along with that technique, you would see him move his index finger and thumb together like that. Um, and Kenny Burrell, you would see a little more of this. So like... So if I take that riff and I try to use my fingers, you see I'm moving like that. So it's a combination of wrist and fingers. Okay, then of course we have sweep picking. Like if I wanted to do a hammer on and then sweep through.
the the best thing that I've done actually though to help with picking is not necessarily running exercises with metronomes. Now that is a good way. I'm not saying that's that's bad. It is good. But where I felt the most motivated and where I really put on my problem solving cap is when I'm trying to learn actual music, like actual riffs. So if there's a riff that you think is fast, but you love it so much and you want to be able to play it, you're going to work and problem solve and feel it out. Which picking technique is going to give me the sound I'm looking for? Which one feels right? Right? Like really focus in on getting the sound you want in a way that feels natural, sustainable, and comfortable. The other thing is practicing something slow in order to play it fast is always a good idea just to really get the notes, get the rhythm, get the sequence. But sometimes you have to practice fast to play fast because you might develop a technique that works good at a slow tempo but it doesn't work good at a fast tempo. Like I said, I used to, I still do it. I go... That works at a slow tempo, but if I want to go fast, it feels sloppy, right? Whereas if I try to get that even motion, that's better at a faster tempo. But then, you know, try out those other ones. That has a different tone, angling it like George Benson. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you want to learn more about playing guitar, head over to guitartricks.com. There's a library of high quality song lessons with downloadable tab, multiple videos per lesson. There's sequential courses on rock, country, blues, a guitar toolbox, backing tracks, all sorts of cool stuff. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson.